parking lot. We'll take it. That works. You bet. It works for me, too. It's all good. Double check. Good evening, and welcome to the city council meeting on August the 9th. Um, Madam Clerk, would you read the roll call, please? Mr. Cannell. Mr. Shiland. Present. Ms. Gray. Present. Mr. Moore. Present. Ms. Reclue. Present. Mr. Shiverdecker. Here. Mr. Vaughn. Uh, here. And Mr. West. <laughs> okay, six council members present, two absent. Okay, very good. You all rise with me. Uh, Pastor Bruce Williamson is with us again this evening. We welcome you and thank you for leading us with the invocation. Privilege, sir. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the blessings you've given us this day. And though it's warmed up again, we certainly appreciate the cooler days that we've had from the intense heat of late July. Grateful, Lord, for the rain, and I pray that meaning as well, realizing that some were flooded. But for the rain to come and for the crops and yards and pastures to be as beautiful as they are, very unusual for this time of the year, and we want to give you the thanks for providing the wonderful rains of summer. We pray for those that may be recovering from flood plains, that you bless them and help and encourage them. For our community, Lord, we're really busy. I see the city workers in their boots busy on the ground with overlays and striping our streets and curbs and doing a lot of summer repair and construction. Bless our city workers, especially with the heat rising again over the weekend. Meet with them in the work that you've called them to do. We pray for public safety, our firefighters and police officers, both their safety in their duty as well as during the school session that will begin next week again with the colleges and public schools and parochial schools beginning a new term. Bless all of our public safety people and make us all aware to heed the school zones and provide our children with a safe community. We lift up, Lord, those that we continue to pray for as part of the city family. Would not be limited to just my list, but I will name the following. I pray, Lord, for Mrs. Bush Jost, for Gabriel Polston, Mayor Benton, Chief Myers, Mr. and Mrs. Reclue, Mr. Chiland, Bill Laswell, and any and all others who need your touch tonight. For this session, for this meeting, I pray, Lord, for the leadership of our mayor and council persons, for the city administration, for those who lead departments throughout our city government and into the field. Bless their work and this session tonight and the community that will be here to share in this meeting. May it be that the results are pleasing to you. Guard our every step and find us all faithful, helping one another. Till we meet again, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Good evening. Our, first, our next item on the list this evening is a uh, public hearing. It has to do with. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Comments from visitors. Before every council meeting, we set aside a time for. Uh, anyone present who would like to share a uh, concern with the city council uh, concerning something in the city? And again, at this time, uh, all we do is ask that you limit your comments to five minutes and, and uh, give us your name and your address. Uh, so at this time, I'll call anyone to the podium who would like to address the city council with a concern. Seeing no one coming forward, we'll move on to the public hearing. Public hearing has to do with establishing a tax rate for the city for the coming year of 2017. This, the uh, hearing will, for the, the agenda for the hearing will be as follows. I'll uh, call three times for anyone who would like to speak in favor, or excuse me, in opposition of of the tax rate and then I'll do uh, three calls for anyone wishing to speak in favor of the uh, matter that we're considering which is the tax rate. So at this time I'll make the first call. Is anyone 
Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition uh, to this uh, tax rate? I don't have any questions on Seeing no one coming forward, I'll make the second call. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition of this proposed tax rate? Again, seeing no one coming forward, I'll make the third and final call. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed tax rate? Okay, thank you. There will now be three calls uh, issued for anyone wishing to speak in favor of the, of the proposed tax rate. First call, is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed tax rate? Seeing no one coming forward, is, we'll issue the second call. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed tax rate? Again, no one's coming forward, so therefore we'll go for the third and final call. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed tax rate? Very good. This public hearing will now be declared closed, and we'll move back to our regular agenda. Thank you. We'll now consider unfinished business, and the first item under unfinished business has to do with the asphalt overlay. Uh, again, Mr. Kyle, are you gonna? You have anything to talk about there? I'm sure you do. We'll be considering this further in the meeting, <laughs> later in the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, we received uh, bids on the asphalt overlay. Christensen Construction is the uh, low bidder. His bid was uh, about eighty-five thousand dollars over what we have budgeted for this year, so uh, we had to look at the list of uh, streets that we were considering and uh, minimize the amount of work that we were doing. So uh, myself and the mayor and Mr. Johnson and some council members uh, took a look at, the, took a look at the, the roads that we were considering and uh, have reduced the list down. Um, it started with what the bid included started with uh, sidewalk work, curb and gutter work, and asphalt overlay on both Grand Street and Ninth Street. Uh, it also included uh, gravel to asphalt street, which is by our warehouse on Brook Brookside Drive, uh, which is a good stretch. Um, it also included an asphalt overlay on Washington, and uh, Vine Street by the bridge that we just just the little sections by the by the bridge that we replaced um, last year and also included milling and uh, reclaiming the gravel log cabin road and hilltop um, included a little bit of milling work on Oak Street for drainage purposes and uh, some sidewalk work on 6th Street so from that list we had to, that I just named to you, we had to reduce that down. And we started with uh, uh, taking out uh, the milling of Hilltop, which uh, saved about $17,000. Uh, Washington Street was, uh, the overlay on Washington, Washington Street was taken out, which was about $12,000. Um, we also took out the sidewalk work on 6th Street, which was about $40,000, 40 to $41,000. And we also reduced the amount of asphalt overlay on Grand Street. We took out the section from uh, 9th to 10th uh, on Grand Street. So it still left, still left the, the, the major section by the middle school. Um, so it was just a little piece there. And that, that saved us, uh, I think, around $11,000, $12,000, something in there. So adding, adding all that up, we, we get to a reduction of about $83,000, which puts us, puts us real close to that. We've uh, been in contact with the uh, with Christensen, the low bidder, and he is willing to honor his bid with these reductions. Yeah. Okay. And everybody wants to know when it's going to happen. And uh, the answer on that is 
asphalt guys show up when they get ready. It will be done as, maybe as late as October. <clears throat> okay? No, but they're, they're pretty good about giving us about a week's notice to let people know and some of that kind of stuff. And that's just so you can get vehicles off of the street yeah. where you're going to redo? Okay. All righty, thank you. Okay, thank you, Tom. Now, consider the sewer plan update, Mr. Dunlap. I'll give two updates. One, we did have a flood sewer plant and uh, no real equipment damage. We kept it out of the buildings. The fire department did come down and help, and we do appreciate that very much. Um, then Sunday, rotor number one broke. And it's back in service now. So, um, this when he says rotor number one broke, it broke. It didn't just quit, it didn't stop, it wasn't a bearing one. The rotor itself broke. Pretty unusual. Never seen it. The wear? Is it repairable or what do we do? Yeah, we, we had repair parts. It was down by the bottom bearing holder, and the flange broke that uh, holds it to the, to the concrete base. Okay. So uh, we did, we did fix it and change the gearbox on the top side at the same time. The gearbox was leaking bad, so okay. uh, both rotors are back in service. <clears throat> we did use the eight-inch pump to put it on standby in case we did get more rain. And rotor number one failed. If everybody remembers, it was rotors as at the beginning of the plant. You know, nothing happens without the rotors. So a little update on the flood. Uh, we do have a meeting with the contractor, the engineer tomorrow with the city. And probably mostly what we're going to talk about is we're starting to worry about the time. Uh, last I heard, the contractor is saying he's a month behind. We're thinking he's a little farther than that. So the engineers tomorrow are bringing a spreadsheet showing the critical path and what time delays they see or time to get materials in. So we're going to have a, we're going to have a conversation with the contractor tomorrow with the engineering firm. So that's, that's the update on CERP plan. Does that does that affect some of our uh, time schedules with DNR? Yes, it does. They had, uh, <coughs> Kyle and I looked late this afternoon, and I believe it was 390 days for substantial completion. Well, they, they got the work order January 4th, so that's going to be the very first part of February. And I don't remember everything, but the clarifier is supposed to be done, the head works, uh, disinfection. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of work to be done before the first part of February. Okay. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. Any other questions for Daryl? Okay. Thank you. We'll now uh, move on to new business. And uh, I believe David LaRue is with us this evening for, with the Brick District. Looks like we're going to have a blast. <laughs> Yes, There's a blast are. every day at the Brick District. We're going to have another blast, that's right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council, for letting us come this evening. Um, I'm representing the, the Brick District, and we are asking for another Brick Blast, uh, where we welcome back our Westminster and William Wood students. We'll do that on Thursday, September the 8th, between 4 o'clock and 7 o'clock. We would like to close off Court Street between 5th and 6th, between, we're thinking let's, we'll close it around 1.30, giving the uh, restaurants an opportunity to get through their lunch hour. We don't want to um, disrupt their lunch hour and business. So we'll close about 1.30 or so. We'll be set up and ready to roll by 3.30, welcome the students, and then it will be over about seven o'clock, so we've told Chief Myers we'll have the street open again by eight o'clock, if not earlier than that. The main reason for the brick blast is because we truly believe in the brick district and I'm in, in the city of Fulton. We feel like if our students have a good experience while they're here for the, the four years that they are at Westminster or William Woods, they'll come back. They'll encourage other students to come. If they have a good experience while they're here, the retention rates will be better at Westminster and William Woods. The revenue will be better for our merchants, for the city. So it's, it's a win-win. Uh, last year, the mayor, Mr. Mayor, you came and welcomed the students, and we would appreciate it if you would do the same. 
we're thinking about 4.30, be there by 4.30. Um, we've also asked Dr. Oconde and Dr. Barnett to come again this year. They were here last year, and um, that was doc one of Dr. Oconde's first public appearances in downtown Fulton, so mm -hmm. Dr. Barnett um, welcomed him also. So that's what we hope to do. We've not heard back from the presidents as to whether or not their schedules will allow, but I'm sure somebody will be there from Westminster and William Woods to help us welcome them. So what we are requesting is to close the street, co close Court Street between 5th and 6th, between 1.30 and say 8 o'clock. We would like to have trash cans <laughs> and barricades and orange cones to close the streets. If they can be delivered, we'll set them out at 1.30 or so. Questions? And of course, you're all welcome to, to come and help us welcome the students, show our support. What do you do for five hours? Well, between 1.30 and 3.30, we'll set up. We may have a couple of tents. We'll have a, <coughs> this is Callaway County, so we will have a flatbed trailer pulled in and that's where we'll set up our DJ. So we'll get the, the um, speaker system, all of that set up. Uh, we will have a scavenger hunt again. So there may be a few things to set out for the scavenger hunt. That's a way that the students are, are encouraged to go into the different buildings, the Kingdom of Cavalry Historical Society, and <laughs> places where they might not necessarily normally go, but could learn something. Um, and then between four and seven, we'll have the scavenger hunt. We'll have the students, Last year, William Woods allowed their students to earn a half a lead point. So they'll have to sign up for that as soon as they arrive, uh -huh. just to prove that they're there. Mm -hmm. um, they will have food. We'll have hot dogs and backwards potato chips, of course. Um, and then we'll also, the different um, um, restaurants. I know mm -hmm. Betts and um, 1851 and Brooklyn Pizza. I know they've all already said yes. They'll help provide food. Um, Post Office Bar and Grill, <coughs> they, they always provide their famous hot wings and they go fast. Mm -hmm. So, and we'll, we'll have music, we'll have the DJ, we'll have, um, we've, we've, we're talking to one of the um, communication professors at William Woods about maybe having some of their, um, their radio students there, broadcast students there. What an experience. The students could come, the broadcast students could come, they could interview some of the other students, let it broadcast back on their the William Woods <laughs> uh, radio station, interview with the mayor, things like that. They get to know each other, they meet each other. They will have only been on campus maybe three weeks or so. The athletes maybe a little bit longer, but mm -hmm. that's cool. what we'll do. <laughs> Debbie, is everybody familiar with what a lead point is? A lead point. Several years ago, Dr. Barnett um, introduced what she calls a lead point. And the students, the students, if they attend different events on campus or maybe in the town, primarily on campus, um, a concert, a speaker series, um, um, athletic events, a play, they can earn a half a point, one point, two point. As they earn, they have to earn a certain amount of points per month. At the end of a semester, they have to have earned a certain amount per semester. At the end of a year, they must have earned a certain amount within that period, and they earn $5,000. Parents encourage their students to yeah. attend those events. <laughs> and it's a learning expense, sure. experience. You know, many of the, some of the events they might not be so interested in, but they're going to learn something. All right. Sure. It's sure. good for them. It was a very wise move by Dr. Barnett. Very wise. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you. I make a motion we accept the recommendation to proposal. Second. Second. Yep. Okay, very good, second. thank you. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve the brick uh, blast. Uh, is there any uh, further discussion or any questions for Ms. Leary? Hearing none, call for the question. All those in favor of the motion, please take five saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay, very Thank great. you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, we'll now go on with new business, and looks like Ms. Corbet is with us this evening with the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of you, yeah, anyway. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Hi, I'm Nikki Hartley with the Callaway County Humane Society, and we're here to see if we can get approval for our 5K dog dog again this year. Um, we were up here last year for our second annual. We had a really great turnout. Um, it's just a fundraiser for the Humane Society. We invite everybody to come out to run walks, so there's not a major rush to the finish line or anything, but just a really nice time to bring your dog out and meet new friends and raise some money for the Humane Society. Um, I think everybody got a copy of the packet I emailed. I'm not for sure if I included a route in that, so I did bring extra copies if anybody's interested. Um, we try to keep it as close to the dog park as possible, so we're not interfering with any kind of traffic or I would hate to cause any kind of traffic issues with this. Um, I've already given uh, the police chief a copy of everything that we have planned, and we'd love to see everybody out there. If anybody's got any questions. Just exactly, you say this is a fundraiser. Where does all this money go, and does it go to a vet? It goes food? to the Callaway what? County Humane Society. So it all goes back to the animals that we rescue throughout the county. Mm -hmm. um, it goes to feeding the ones that are in foster care. It goes to medical expenses. It goes to help cover um, fundraising or spay and neuter f funds for you know animals <coughs> that are in the community that maybe people don't have the money to spay or neuter their own pets. I try to help out as much as possible with that also. <coughs> okay. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we accept this proposal. Second. Okay, very good. I have a motion and a second to approve the annual dog jog. Uh, don't say that so how many joggers did you have last year? Um, uh, last year we had we doubled our numbers. Last year, the first th first year we had around twelve. Um, last year, I meant to look the number up, but I think it was between twenty five and twenty seven, somewhere around that number. So I mean, if the numbers continue to grow, I mean it's a good fundraiser for us. And oh sure. So we're hoping for nice weather again. So. Sounds like fun. Nope, that's fine. You do understand we don't guarantee good weather. <laughs> I do understand that. <laughs> but anything you could help with would be great. <laughs> oh, six inches of rain wouldn't help down there, would it? Yeah. No. 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 The duck yeah. races, maybe. But no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. Okay. Uh, so not any further questions, we'll call for a question. All those in favor of the uh, motion to uh, approve the annual dog jog, please uh, signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay. Looks like we're going to do it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Good luck with your event. Thanks. Okay. So now I'll move on to uh, Mr. Barnes is getting up. <laughs> He's going to fill us in on uh, rain. <laughs> well, I'm going to try. I think most are the after effects. Are the right. after. Yeah. I got. I got to lower this so the guy that's with me can actually speak to you. Here oh, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> I have with me Glenn Price. He's the uh, new claims and litigation uh, director for Murma, and I'm going to have him speak here uh, as part of my report just momentarily. I'll uh, set the stage just real briefly. Obviously, we all know it rained last week. It rained pretty, pretty considerable, considerable amount. I think that actual amount varies depending upon where you had a cup of coffee last week because um, the tails just kept getting bigger as the <laughs> week went on. Uh, I don't want to make light of uh, a pretty bad situation uh, for a lot of uh, property owners in town. Uh, they experienced, uh, and, I, and I don't know how many people exactly, uh, quite a few people had, uh, had water in their basement, either groundwater flowing in, uh, some entering through uh, floor drains. Uh, frankly, there just was not a spot left in the town, I don't believe, where water was not. Uh, it was looking for every crevice it could possibly find <coughs> to, get a, to relieve a little bit of pressure. Um, I've lived here quite a while, and I know most of this group will say the same thing. There were, there were streets closed last week that I don't remember ever being closed. <coughs> uh, water standing in places, I don't remember water standing like it was. Um, just a couple of th thoughts real quick. Um, I certainly uh, want to uh, thank uh, the employees, uh, the many departments that responded in the wee hours of the morning. I think some of them showed up 3.30, 4 o'clock uh, at the uh, wastewater plant. Uh, I know the fire department was engaged, the police department was, street departments were putting barricades up. Uh, some folks were driving around those barricades, which then 
gave some work for the police department. Uh, fire department, I think, had a, had a fire 6 a.m. Uh, as if there wasn't enough going on. Um, uh, again, before I hand this over to uh, Glenn, uh, just uh, another uh, tidbit of information. We looked at, uh, I, I looked at, uh, it seemed like hundreds of uh, property owners' basements last week. It, it wasn't that bad. It must have just taken more time and caused me a great deal of concern. And uh, it's a process to go through. Uh, and it's never any fun to see folks that have lost property uh, contents. Um, you know, precious things that uh, were stuck in their basements for safekeeping. Um, so a few property owners asked the city to file a claim on their behalf, uh, which would uh, facilitate an investigation in particular areas to see what liability the city may had, uh, whether something wasn't maintained properly. Um, most of those claims have been responded to, which is why Glenn's here, and he's going he's gonna to touch on those. I think there's probably is still one, one, two still outstanding. Um, and those are being looked at um, uh, at, at this, not at this hour, but still uh, going forward. Uh, we decided last week, kind of on a just a side note, we, as we, uh, JC's department was receiving so many phone calls from folks that had waterlogged property and, uh, and a desire to try to get rid of that, uh, that we decided, we were getting so many phone calls that we kind of decided to do a summer cleanup uh, for folks to put stuff out this week and uh, and that we would pick it up and haul it away. Uh, we felt that was the right thing to do uh, due to the volume of calls. Uh, JC said, uh, and I shouldn't quote him, but I think he said something about, uh, yeah, we were probably, they were probably getting 40, 50 calls a day, uh, which was a big number uh, when you multiply that out throughout the week. Cool. Uh, probably a few hundred people called uh, with, with things that they needed to dispose of. Uh, so again, we felt that was the right thing to do. Uh, and with that, I don't think uh, uh, I don't think I had any other notes that I missed. Uh, let me have uh, let me have Glenn Price kind of respond to uh, uh, the liability claims that were filed on behalf of uh, our citizens. First of all, uh, thank you for allowing me to come in and discuss this scenario with you guys. Uh, one of the greatest joys I have as an insurance adjuster is to be able to help people out when we can help people out. One of the greatest difficulties, though, is times like these when there's instances where um, we can't help people out or uh, it's not feasible for us to. Uh, in this case, we had about 5.77 <coughs> inches of rainfall, six inches of rainfall in this uh, short period of time, which caused an inundation, as you guys know, of the city streets and of uh, particular systems. Uh, because of the inundation of that, uh, those claims were, have been denied. Now, there is one claim that has not yet uh, been truly reviewed yet, um, and that's because it just got turned in. Uh, the adjuster that it's most likely going to be assigned to is on vacation, so I'm going to have that reassigned so that can get looked into uh, quickly uh, and right away. Um, some of the things we look at when determining whether or not a city is negligent or liable for a particular scenario such as this uh, deals with um, amount of rainfall at, at times. Uh, and in a case where six inches of rain fell in about eight hours, that's just uh, too much for one particular city normally to handle. Uh, also, the things that we look at are just the history of uh, how the city maintains the systems, maintains well, their work, their city, and that sort of thing. And it's pretty clear the city of Fulton uh, annually maintains uh, the city pretty well. So there's no aspect of uh, that really coming into play as far as these things. So. Um, based uh, upon how well the city normally maintains the systems, uh, the inordinate amount of rainfall, we did not feel that the city would be negligent for that sort of thing, and so that's why we had uh, denied the sewer claims or the flood claims that we had come in so far. Mm. Are there any questions? Okay. Yeah. I have one. Yes, sir. All of those houses on 2nd Street and Stinson Creek runs right behind them. Mm -hmm. Do they qualify for any of this that you're talking about? As far as insurance is concerned, they know it's going to flood. It's a low area. It's a flood area. Right. Now, are you talking in reference to their homeowner's claim? Or yes, yes. Okay. Uh, that would be something that depends on how their homeowner's claim, uh, policy is set up. Some would be set up that way. Um, in some cases, they would be required to go through the federal government for that. So but it wouldn't have anything specifically to do with you? Correct. Okay. Correct. None of those properties on 2nd Street contact. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mary, do you have a question? No, I did not. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anybody else have a question for Mr. Price? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Very informative. Yes. Appreciate you. Yes. Thank oh, you, you do for us. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you. All right. Very good. <laughs> That's all the new business and unfinished business we had. So, and at this time, uh, it, we've set aside a time for council members to bring their concerns or any matter that they'd like to be discussed that's not on the agenda forward. And, Mr. Uh, Mayor? I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said the oh, and they made Am I missing something? No. Oh, okay. I was holding my hand up that I had a concern when you was ready. <laughs> He's ready. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, so I guess uh, we'll just start with you, Rick. Do you have anything you'd like to bring forward? Uh, just one item. A couple, a couple of weeks ago or a couple of meetings ago, we had a um, report from the Traffic Commission about um, the west side of West 7th Street or west side of Hickman Avenue. Okay. And I was just wondering if were we planning to do anything about that or <coughs> should we set up an ordinance for the west side? I can tell you that's something Kyle and I have kind of been uh, working on together to get the specifics of it and get it all hammered out. So I do plan on that being on, if not the next agenda, definitely by the following one. So it is in the works. Okay, that's the only question I have. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for staying on top of that. Yeah, anything else? No, it was on the same Mr. Show. Moore? No, I have nope. not. It was on the same subject. <laughs> okay. How about you, Mr. Vaughn? Uh, I don't think I have anything. Ms. Gray? Well, this is just, I wanted to thank the uh, street crews and everybody that was out. If the roundabout was like totally flooded. There was no way there at Westminster where the <laughs> lake is. That was down by McIntyre School, that was a mess. So congratulations, Guy, good job. Also Friday, if you didn't get there, the United Way fun uh, event thing was very successful, uh, very good. A lot of good people were there. Um, they did some online auction stuff. It, it was just a very good event. So if you missed it, you really missed something. That's it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lau. Um, I appreciate everyone involved that worked out the asphalt situation. Um, Sounded like we had some tough decisions there, but I'm glad to see that the road to the warehouse is getting paid. That's that's great. So that's all I got. Okay. Yes, I do have a couple things. First of all, I'd like to say that uh, I've been dealing with the C Highway and Tennyson intersection out there. Um, worried about the speed limits 50 miles an hour and we've been doing the state and as as of today uh, <clears throat> there is a new sign put up uh, on uh, the Tennyson facing sea uh, highway that states the cross traffic does not does not stop so so far that's what we've got from the state so I want everyone to be aware of that somehow something somehow that's right and uh, another thing is I had a consistent call me she lives on first street <clears throat> and uh, that's a very short little street two blocks there is no speed limit posted on that street and therefore the speed limit would be 30 miles an hour if it's not posted it's two blocks it's a dead end street um, she's very concerned about the speed limit there with such a short area and they're doing it 30 miles an hour also when you come when the uh, between 5 and 7 in the evening when you when they're coming home from the uh, uh, hospital workers and so on uh, they're instead of coming up to the four-way stop on first street or um, second street and the four-way stop. They're cutting at an Addison, turning left on Addison, coming through, hitting that first that first street, and the awful lot of traffic through there. You've got uh, no speed limit posted, so therefore there seems to be quite a problem there. I would like to see if possibly our police could uh, maybe monitor that a little bit, and maybe um, the traffic commission might consider looking at that sure. speed limit yeah. in that area. Oh. Addison is only about a block long, isn't One it? One block. Yeah. They come in there, cut, and mm -hmm. go this way. Oh, they oh. bypass the four-way stop. Getting off work and ready. Exactly. Don't want to wait. Don't want to wait. So the they're missing that stop sign. Yeah. And cut okay. through that residential on through it, yeah. 
Yeah. We'll pass that on traffic commission and the chief's part of that. So Thank you. That, that should cover both, both items. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Wayne. Not a thing. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay. We'll uh, now move on to resolutions. Our first resolution is uh, number 3258. It has to do with a contract with Christensen Construction. Uh, Councilman Shiverdecker, would you please present this uh, for consideration? Yes, sir. Resolution number 3258, a resolution authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri, to execute a contract with Christensen Construction Company of Kingdom City, Missouri for the 2016 asphalt overlay project at an estimated value of $450,000 to sign all necessary documents in relation to said contract. Make a motion we adopt resolution number 3258 at tonight's meeting. Second. Very good, thank you. I have a motion and a second to adopt uh, resolution 3258. Is there any further discussion or question on that resolution? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say five saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay, very good, thank you. We'll now consider resolution number uh, 3259, which is a resolution uh, having to do with a contract with HDR Engineering, which concerns our uh, negotiations with uh, Missouri and Department of Revenue, or excuse me, Department of Resources, <coughs> Natural Resources. Uh, Councilman Vaughn, would you please present res 3259? Resolution number 3259, the resolution authorizing the mayor on the behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri to execute a contract with HRD Engineering Incorporated, or HDR, excuse me, Engineering Incorporated of Lee Summit, Missouri for the, two, for the 2016 Stinson Creek TMDL Implementation Negotiation Project and to sign all necessary documents in relation to said contract. I make a motion to adopt resolution 3259 at tonight's meeting. Second. Very good, thank you. I have a motion and a second to adopt 3259. Uh, is there any further discussion or questions on this resolution? I just have yes, one. Please. This mentioned Stinson Creek. Is this <coughs> all of the creek or just down by the uh, water treatment plant? I'll let Kyle jump on that. I would say it's probably just above the, the treatment plant. Go ahead. Yeah, this mainly concerns above the treatment plant, but uh, all of Stinson Creek is kind of intertwined <coughs> in this subject. But uh, this particular matter is, is uh, that Daryl gave you a report on the wastewater treatment plant uh, progress and uh, the, how healthy the creek is. Uh, after the treatment plant, um, this is how how DNR and we determine that, and so it's mainly tied to the wastewater treatment plant. Because okay. I was just wondering uh, it, sometimes. It, uh, it, uh, I'm, I want to follow up on that just a little bit, though. But, but we have to find out what the in it is. It is to determine the health of the creek. Mm -hmm. But we also want to determine the impact that our, that our sewer plant is having on the creek. So in order for us to determine the impact we're having, there will be some testing done above the creek, above the sewer plant mm -hmm. of the water before it gets there so we can find out, is it already <coughs> dirty? Mm -hmm. is it, does it already have uh, low, low oxygen and high suspended solids? And then, we wanna, then we'll test it below the wastewater treatment plant to see how our effluent is changing the quality of the water. Yeah. I just the, know the yeah. school kids a lot of times will go down there and do a, a science study on the quality of the Stinson Creek. Right. And that's why I was wondering if yeah. this is all going to affect the entire creek or what. Yeah. It, one just of the to kind of take another step back a little further, if you recall, the main thing this was all came about was when um, Mo, uh, Missouri Department of Natural Resources and uh, EPA were trying to give us 
uh, emission standards for our sewer plant that were uh, technologically unattainable according to our uh, mm -hmm. uh, consultants and so therefore we fought this for about two years and and we finally have gotten it to work now it's negotiable so that's what this is all about is to make sure that we can continue to get a reasonable uh, emission standard from uh, and that's not the proper term but right. TMD but it is workable now right. whereas before it was cut and dry that's right okay yeah Beverly we're we're trying to work with DNR to include a test that's that's right above uh, Fulton if you will on Stinson right. Creek to quantify um, what's coming into Fulton uh, along with what's in Fulton and then wastewater treatment plant um, so we're trying to trying to add that add that to uh, uh, their testing of the stream because uh, okay. that we think would be beneficial um, but that would that part of a negotiation that we'll have to have in, in a few months so okay okay very good thank you Carl mm -hmm. any other questions <coughs> okay if not we'll go ahead and call for the question all those in favor of uh, adopting resolution 3259 please signify by saying yes. Yes. yes yes all those opposed no okay, very good thank you and now consider <coughs> resolution number 3260 which is a resolution that uh, approves or adopts our uh, results from our election on on august the 2nd and councilman cannell would you please present this resolution sure will. <coughs> Resolution number 3260, whereas a primary election was held in the city of Fulton, Missouri on the second day of August 2016, and whereas the county clerk of Callaway County, Missouri has certified to the city clerk the results of the primary election held on the above date, and whereas the council finds that the following votes were cast to wit. Question, shall the city of Fulton continue applying and collecting the local sales tax on the titling of motor vehicles, trailers, boats and outboard motors that were purchased from a source other than a licensed Missouri dealer. Continuation of this measure will not result in reduction of local revenue to provide for the vital services for the city of Fulton and it will not place Missouri dealers of motor vehicles, outboard motors, boats and trailers at a competitive disadvantage to non-Missouri dealers of motor vehicles, outboard motors, boats and trailers. Yes, votes ten. Uh, 1030 no 496 now therefore be it resolved by the council of the city of Fulton Missouri as follows section 1 that the city finds that the tax uh, continuation question passed I move that we adopt resolution 3260 tonight second thank you appreciate it I think at this time I'd like before we go any further is to thank the citizens of Fulton uh, again at the support and uh, what I call a housekeeping measure and uh, continuing this tax we, we appreciate their support uh, okay so is there any other questions on uh, resolution 3260 hearing none all those in favor of uh, passing resolution 3260 please signify saying yes yes, yes. all those opposed no Okay, very good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. We'll now move on to uh, ordinance, ordinance, ordinances. Anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, we'll look at first reading ordinances. And uh, Councilman uh, Shilin, would you please present 1458 for first reading, which has to do with uh, tax rates for next year uh, by title only. I would proudly elect to give this reading. As long as I've been here, I've never had anything lower than the tax rate. <laughs> <laughs> Bill number 1458, <clears throat> an ordinance fixing the tax rate and leveling taxes for the calendar year of 2016 on all taxable property in the city of Fulton, Missouri, and establish an effective date. I move the bill number 1458 be forwarded to our next regular scheduled meeting. Second. Very good, thank you. 
I have a motion to advance bill number 1458 for second reading. Is there any discussion of that motion? I just have a question. The apartments that are built there on Tyler <coughs> behind McDonald's, does that affect their property evaluation, the residents that are already there? It shouldn't. Okay. Wasn't the tax rate different than now than it was when it was handed down? The one yes. that was the one the handout was the corrected version. Yeah. Ms. Kathy, <coughs> do you want to address yeah. this at all? What happened was that the um, county sent out a notice telling us what the tax rate would be. And then probably several weeks later, um, they sent out a corrected version that said they'd made an error on the amount of new construction, which gave us a different tax rate. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Okay, any other questions for Kathy? Thank you, thank you, Kathy. <coughs> thank you, Kathy. It's just, it's a combination of the state of Missouri and the county um, building that tell us what, what, what we can collect. We really don't have a role in establishing what our tax rate is. We don't submit or ask or tell anything. Okay. If there's not any other questions, I'm going to call for the question. All those in favor of advancing Bill 1458, uh, please say by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay, thank you. That does it for first reading. We'll do it. We'll now consider second reading ordinances and uh, we'll Consider bill number 1456, which has to do with the repeal of rummage sales permits. And uh, Councilwoman Reclu, would you please present bill number 1456, title only? Yes, I would like to present uh, second and third reading tonight. Okay. Sure. Bill number 1456, an ordinance repealing Chapter 90, Article 2, rummage sales section 90 28 and 90 29, Fulton City Code, to remove the requirements for a rummage sale permit and establish an effective date. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that bill number 1456 56 be ready for the third reading at tonight's meeting. Second. Very good, thank you. I have a motion and a second to <coughs> advance bill number 1456. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay, very good, thank you. Councilwoman Reclue, would you please present 1456 for third reading? Yes, bill number 1456, and ordinance repealing chapter 90, article two, rummage sale, section 90-28, 90-29, Fulton City Code to remove the requirements for a rummage sale permit and establish the effective date. I make a motion to place bill number 1456 for final passage at the same meeting. Tonight. Tonight. <laughs> Thanks. Second. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Yes, sir. Have a motion and a second to adva uh, advance bill number 1456 to final. Is there any further discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 Did I hear a no? Okay, thank you. Very good. Uh, all those in opposed, please signify by saying no. Okay, okay thank you. Well, now, uh, you've heard bill number 1456 presented three times. It's now time for final consideration. Uh, please answer yes or no to a roll call. Madam Clerk. Okay, Mr. Shiland? Yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Reclue? Yes. Mr. Shiverdecker? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. And Mr. Cannell? Yes. Okay, seven council members affirmative, one absent. Okay, very good. Thank you. <laughs> it probably cost the city We're going to lose that great, about, city great city amount of revenue. It did. It did. <laughs> it did. Okay. Bill's getting ready to have it.
Thank you. Sale. For the newspaper's benefit, <laughs> if anybody's having a garage sale this coming weekend, they don't need a permit. <laughs> yeah. Or the weekend after that, or for hopefully ever again. Exactly. That's what that was. Huh? 50 cents. 50 cents. 50 cents. It used to be 50 cents to register. Now you Garage sale permit. For garage sales, yard sales. Yeah, well, and to get the permit. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Not, Not now. anymore. <laughs> Not Forget it, Jen. Just pass <laughs> on. <laughs> one five. Welcome, garage sale. Question. <laughs> There's only four? Sure. <laughs> oh, yes. You're only allowed to have four in one year, folks. Thank you. Okay. So that needs to be in the paper. Yes. So we didn't yeah. repeal that one. Huh? No, so we that did one, not repeal the limit of four years. Four years of limit. So the garage sale police are counting how many sales are. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Steve's job. <laughs> that, that's a good point. A Thank Thanks you, for making that. Exactly. It is yeah, a we, probably a complaint. We, we do field. not encourage anyone to, to abuse that. Okay. Correct. It'd be sick to have more than one. <laughs> well, that's okay. time to collect taxes. Let's move on to business. bill number 1457, which is an ordinance that, uh, again, is more or less housekeeping, which... Uh, Cleans up uh, yeah. some parking issues or parking ordinances. Uh, Councilman Moore, would you please present 1457, second reading? Yes, sir. Title only. If no objections, I will read this second and third this evening. Bill number 1457, ordinance repealing ordinance numbers 1373 14, 1383 15, 1390 15, 1394 15, and 1395 15 amendment, chapter 110, traffic and vehicles, and a corporate new ordinance establishing an effective date. Move for third reading at the night's meeting by title only. Second. Very good. We have a motion and a second to advance 1457 for third reading. Is there any further discussion of the motion? <coughs> I believe last time Mr. Johnson said this was already in effect. We we're just kind of cleaning up a bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay, very good. So all those in favor of advancing 1457, uh, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Moore, would you please present Bill number 1457, third reading? Bill number 1457, an ordinance repealing ordinance number 1373 14, 1383 15, 1390 15, 1394 15, and 1395 15, amending chapter 110, traffic and vehicles, incorporate a new ordinance establishing an effective date. Move this for final passage at the night's meeting. Second. Very good, thank you. I have a motion and a second to advance bill number 1457 for final consideration. Is there any uh, discussion again? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Very good, thank you. You've heard uh, bill number 1457 uh, uh, read three times. And it's now time for final consideration. Please uh, answer yes or no to uh, roll call. Madam Clerk. Okay, Ms. Gray. Yes. Mr. Moore. Uh, yes. Ms. Reclu. Yes. Mr. Shiverdecker. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mr. Cannell. Yes. And Mr. Shiland. Yes. Seven council members affirmative, one absent. Okay, very good, thank you. That does it for uh, ordinances, and we'll, I do not have any appointments this evening. You do have an announcement on your agenda. You please note that. I think you all are prepared for that one. Uh, we do not have a need for an executive session this evening. Okay. Does any, well, before I run on to that, does anybody else have any announcements they want to make? Okay. Um, if anyone has any questions regarding their MML packet, Feel free to come see me after the meeting and we can go over yeah. anything you need clarification. Okay. Now when are we going to discuss this or are we going to? <coughs> work session. Work, work session. Zimmerman? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Work session. Work session. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want that for the work session? Okay. We'll uh, consider that in the work session here this evening because we do not have anything else. So that's what I was getting ready to ask. 
And, uh, Thank you, Ms. Gray, for bringing that up. Okay, very good. So at this point, I'll consider a, a motion for adjournment. For motion to adjourn. Second. second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second for adjournment. All those in favor of the motion, please signify saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay. Do you want uh, a five-minute break or you want to just